Hello, welcome to this Computer Weekly video. I'm Brian Glick, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Computer Weekly. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the enduringly important topic of enterprise IT security. I'm going to be having a discussion about some of the challenges that organisations are facing at the moment and how they're going about tackling some of those. And to help me do that, I'm joined by Andre Cavaletz. Uh, Andre is the Chief Technologist for HP Security. Andre, thank you for coming along and joining us. Pleasure. Um, you, know, you obviously work with you know, a wide range of, of, of organisations, helping them with, with some of the enterprise security challenges that they face. Uh, what do you see is, is going on in the market? What are the big issues at the moment uh, that the organisations are facing in this area? It's an amazing world that we live in at the moment, with a hugely digitally interconnected world. And one of the biggest threats that we're facing is a very relentless and, and dynamic environment that, that puts all of those digital assets at risk to some degree. So whether it's the you know whether it's cyber criminals, whether it's nation states, whether it's the exposure of our individual privacy to you know online, it's the things that are facing you know the risk that's facing our digital assets at every step of the supply chain, every moment of the day, is a really current and you know and and dangerous trend that's you know that, that's that's there and very present. We see a globally interconnected cyber criminal marketplace that's worth about $104 billion. That's about twice the amount of money we spend on protecting our information assets. So if we think about an imbalance and a really clear and present danger, that's the risk that's facing organisations today. And it faces governments, it faces enterprises, and it faces us as individuals, and, and increasingly worryingly, our children as well. So, you know, clearly, it's, you know, there has rarely, if ever, been, been a greater focus on, on some of the issues that you're talking about. You know, that presents a, a huge number of challenges for, for people working in IT, though, for CIOs and I, I, IT leaders. What does it mean for them? And it's difficult trying to understand against that huge, you know, worrying backdrop, what are the most important things to focus on, the most important challenges. And I think there's, you know, there are three key challenges that a, that a CIO or a CEO has got to face. The first is that relentless and dynamic threat environment, the sophisticated attacks, and the fact that if you've been breached, you won't be the first person to find out. I think 94% of all breaches, um, you're informed from a, by a third party, whether that's law enforcement, whether that's on Twitter, you, know, you don't want to be the last person to find out. That's a real worry. And also our ability to remediate those attacks is getting worse every year. So no, while the attacks are increasing in sophistication and volume, our ability to, you know, to really remediate and respond to those attacks is getting worse. It's moved from 10 days on average to 30 days. That's nearly a month to close one of those big breaches. So the first piece, the big challenge is the attack. The second piece is around regulation and compliance. So governments, industry bodies, best practice are all starting to try and catch up with and describe the best way to work and the best way to secure your information assets. And that's placing a huge burden on organisations and IT departments and security teams as they try and understand and how to balance best practice with compliance with audit. So compliance regulation is a huge topic and then particularly that gets even harder when you operate in multiple geographies as we start to see you know, global um, socio-economic changes and also those geopolitical changes around privacy for example. And I think the final challenge or the third big challenge is actually the explosion and adoption of exciting technology. Whether it's mobile devices, whether it's tablets, whether it's cloud or bring your own device to an organisation, BYOD I think to some CIOs described as bring your own danger because you just didn't know what they were going to do with it. Three very big challenges there, clearly, that, that, that you've outlined. Mm. You know, how, how are you seeing organisations going about tackling them? What are, what are they doing in practice? And there are practical steps you can take, and I think that's a really, really good question. I mean, the first thing I think we all have to do, and what we advise and help our customers do, is disrupt the adversary. Okay, so how do you disrupt the adversary when they're trying to attack you? Right across what, what we describe as a kill chain. So the way in which an attacker gets into your organisation they steal and change and, and take your key information assets and then take them out. How do you disrupt the five-step kill chain, whether it's at a research stage, whether it's how they get into your organisation through the perimeter? And worryingly, I think we still spend about 80% of our security budget at the perimeter. And I think we should all you know, really recognise and realise that that perimeter is, is not a fail-safe device. We need to also think about all of the controls that sit behind that. So we need to be able to understand and monitor you know, how 
attackers are operating once they're within our environments. Again, a huge worrying statistic for me is that on average an attacker has 243 days to spend time spent inside your organization to find those key digital assets and then take them. Now, you know, we're working very hard to understand the behavior of systems and of users and people so we can identify that and turn that 243 days down to, you know, down to milliseconds so to catch that behavior. So disrupting the adversary is one very key practical step at each step in their kill chain. Second one is about managing risk. And that starts with understanding your risk, understanding your organization's tolerance to risk, understanding which assets you use and how your users operate and how your consumers perceive you. If you're a bank, you have a very different risk tolerance to a digital media agency, for example. So we need to understand that risk. And I think it's just over half of organizations believe at the chief exec level, they have an end-to-end -end view or a single view of risk across their organization. That's a, you know, it's a huge worry because Without understanding that risk, you can't make the key decisions about which things to protect and which things to enable. So, and we help you know, a lot of organizations do that and understand through that process. And then the third area really is around actually extending your capability. If we rely on us as individuals and as organizations to stand alone against this tide of attack, and we act as islands and we don't share information and we don't have a common view of the threat, we're always set up to fail. The attacker only has to be right once and we have to be right every single time. So extending your capability is about picking the right partners. And, you know, and for us, that's partners who have a view, like HP, of a global real-time threat network, who can see an incident happening in, in a government space and how that will relate to oil and gas, who can see a type of user behavior in a retail environment or a consumer store and how that would affect you know, a major manufacturing organization. It can bring all that intelligence together and give somebody real-time vis visualization of the threat globally and respond to that. So extending your capability is really important because I don't think people can rely on things, they can't rely on themselves to combat this huge active threat. Okay. Can you perhaps bring some of those sort of best practices to life by perhaps giving us some examples of, of organizations that HP has, has, has worked with and, and what they've done and some of the benefits that, that they've achieved? Sure, absolutely. And I think the cornerstone of that is, is really having somebody who you can trust and partner with. And I think that's one of the great advantages that we have at HP. And people really trust us. We, pro we protect some of the most, the largest and most attacked networks in the world, whether that's you know, large portions of you know, the military organizations, whether that's governments, whether that's huge oil and gas, con gas conglomerates. They rely on HP because we have several well, many, but several very important capabilities and assets that we bring to bear. We've got a global network of security operations centers right around the world on every continent that allows us to see and understand threats. And you know, we recently, you know, I think we see 23 billion events every single month. Now, it's hard to understand and conceptualize what that means. But that's 50,000 events a minute. So being able to see that scale and that volume of discrete security events and then turn them into action is, is really important for our clients. We also have 5,000 security professionals globally. So, you know, any of our clients, be it a government or a retailer or a bank, will have, if an incident occurs, our forensics teams on the ground within 48 hours, they'll have a call back within 15 minutes. So we can respond as quick as humanly possible to a, a major incident. Um, if we take, for example, a big university we work with who have, you know, students all over the world. They've got a huge number of devices. They have research bases and university campuses in China, in the US, in the UK. They're managing security at a number of different complex levels. You know, 40,000 undergraduates, deep research students, you know, academic research topics and operating across the world. And we all know that students are not great followers of policy and process. So helping them end to end manage their, their risk, helping them model scenarios and understand how to keep their research and their students and their reputation intact is vitally important. And that's just as important for university as it is for a global manufacturer. We help you know, one of the largest global manufacturers whose challenge was exactly how do we allow our employees to work anytime, any place all over the world. So we've helped them build a secure mobile cloud-based solution that allows 320,000 employees 
to access and work productively and safely anywhere in the world. Now, that's the kind of concrete examples of what we do. But if you take the, you know, abstract that up to the next layer, we know what's happening right across the world because we, you know, we secure 43 million users. When you do that, when you look after 43 million users globally, you have such an insight into what's happening, how they're being attacked, how they're behaving, how they want to use technology, you know, and how you can really help and enable their day-to-day -day lives. I think that's why, you know, that's why we feel we have a, a very unique perspective on, on security. You know, clearly, it's a it's a big and complex topic that, that that you're talking about, and you know I don't wish to to, to over trivialise it, but you know for, for for CIOs and CEOs who who are looking at the scale of the challenges that that they can face, if there was one piece of advice that you you'd give them, the the one absolutely critical thing that they should be doing now, what would that be? Twofold, two things, two very simple things. I think you need to understand your risk. So understand what it is you're trying to protect. Understand the threats that are facing those digital assets that you have and those processes. That's the first step. Understand what you have. And I think the second piece is about response. Know exactly what you're going to do if you experience a major data breach. Who's going to be in the room with you? How many minutes or seconds will it be before you've got a forensics team on the ground, before you've informed you know, your users or your consumers? So understand what your risk is and learn to help mitigate that. Now, first step, understand, and then really understand what happens you know, if a breach occurs, your response as an organisation. We, we, we did some research, and I think 24% of chief execs felt comfortable leading a, a major data breach response. Now, that, that, that should worry them, and it worries us, and it's something we can work on together. But knowing what you do in those first minutes, at the speed of Twitter, when information of yours or of your consumers is out in the wild, is of vital importance to a chief executive or a CIO. Andre Cavalets from HP Security, thanks for coming along and sharing your experiences of, uh, of tackling some of the, uh, the, the IT security challenges that organisations are facing today. Um, that's all we've got time for on this video. We've talked about some of the, the big challenges um, in enterprise IT security at the moment and hopefully there's been a few useful bits of information that you can take away and help you as you develop your strategy in this area too. Thanks for watching.